Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. To join a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice, head to xyadvisor.com. G'day, g'day. How's it going? What do you know? Strike a like Clayton here from XY Advisor. Uh, today, we're talking, actually, there's a lot going on in the world, right? There's a big thing, COVID-19. And, uh, and so one of the things that XY has been doing for a while is working from home. Um, was able to track down Matthew uh, as the founder and, and CEO of um, Bonjoro. Mate, thanks for coming on. Hey, Clayton. Awesome to be here. Yeah. Well, um, so you're, you're big in video, right? Like, so, um, and we're pretty big in video as well. We, we do a lot of stuff through an application called Marco Polo, um, which is like Slack, I guess, in a lot of ways, but maybe just more video. So it's, you can pick what subject or group you converse in. Um, and you go back and forth and talk about a particular subject. And if you change subjects, um, then, then you sort of move to another group. Um, we find that works really well. We do the majority of our work as, um, as remote, um, but this is something that uh, advisors and really everyone's going to have to get their head around uh, in the short term. One of the things that I've used Bonjoro for um, a little bit is um, talking to external people via video. So it's almost like, I use Marco Polo for internal, but I don't really want to have to tell other people to have to go download an app so I can talk to them. Right. So, so Marco Polo works really well, sort of person to person when you're talking frequently, but Bonjoro, the, the advantages I found with Bonjoro were uh, the person doesn't have to download anything to receive my messages. Right. So it's a, it's a, it's an efficient way to, to speak via video um, in a way that does, it puts no barriers in the way of the person I'm speaking to. So it's more of a, it's more of a, a, a B to C rather than an internal communications tool. Um, either way, a business has to handle a lot of communications, both internal and external. Um, and because we're moving to this remote working situation, I would say at least for one month, potentially more, maybe I'm being optimistic, but potentially it could be as much as like, you know, to a bloody vaccine comes out, which could be in a couple of months, regardless of all that communication still needs to happen. We still need to kick this economy along and no one wants their business to go down. So I can, this is sort of like the first time in history where we've got a problem, which is we need to go and uh, hide somewhere, but, but we've got the solution and the tools are at hand. And so it's so cool to have someone who's got a company that is part of my toolkit and I'm sure many other toolkits on how to solve this problem. So can we go into a little bit of where Bonjoro's, I guess, premise for existing came from? Like what problem were you guys solving? And then do you think that uh, you're going to start solving more problems for more people? Yeah. So to where we kind of come from on why we exist, uh, we, we kind of started off for three years ago. So uh, a little bit, a little bit earlier in video, uh, but we basically found that in especially transactions that are happening online or, or businesses that are going more online as everyone's starting to scale, I think we've just started to lose the human touch with our customers a little bit. And this is not to all, to, to all, to all companies, but all companies have parts of the funnel that, that, that I think faces problems. So, yeah, a very common one is leads. So inquiries coming in. Yeah, people are not walking walking to shop anymore. They're they're inquiring online. And for many of us, having a human touch as part of the sales process or as part of the customer process is a key part to winning those customers over, enjoying those customers and them enjoying you, and then having those customers stay with you for life. Yeah, relationships are are everything. And this is not just services or financial industries. This is everything from e-commerce to you know to to, to SaaS like the industry that we're in and you know, some, 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 uh, I think industries have lost us more than others. Uh, but what we found is that ultimately humans are social creatures. We, we, we've gone for this whole scale revolution over the last kind of five to 10 years. And in pursuit of scale, we've dropped communication, uh, in its, in its human form, which is, which is kind of face to face. Now that video is coming back and technology is enabling that and upload speeds are enabling that. 
putting your face back into the customer funnel, taking time in your day, you know, which, which potentially only has to be a minute to acknowledge customers, acknowledge leads, open the doors, drop the walls, get the transparency, show who you really are, invite customers in yeah, and vice versa. They'll invite you in is incredibly important to getting, you know, to winning more customers uh, and succeeding at your business. So, you know, you look at the sign of the times now where everyone's starting to go remote work. We're, we're talking a lot about how, how this impacts working with teams, using Slack, using Zoom, but it, it, it potentially impacts more how you work with customers. And, you know, what a week or two weeks, fine. Like, no, no, no big difference. We can all work around that. As you say, if this goes into, you know, more than a month, and, I, and I'm an optimist. I think, I think optimism is good here. If it goes further and longer, then we're going to hit points where, like, relationships will suffer. And the way to save those, I think, is to carry on as if you're having a coffee conversation. You can both grab coffees. You can jump on a call on Zoom. Um, but also, you know, making sure that you're putting yourself back into customers' lives as much as possible. I think, you know, for leads, for customers, for inquiries, for, for customers who've been with you a year, even just reaching out and saying, hey, hope everything's okay. If you need help, let us know. And doing that in person rather than through email. And by the way, like email... It can absolutely be in person, but it's, it's kind of hard to know if emails are legit or automated video. Like right now, this might change, but you can't fake it. You know, if it's you doing a video in your kitchen with your kids running around, everyone's like, yeah, yeah, this is, this is the guy, you know, or the girl. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I would say, and one, one of the things that you touched on, which was, um, and, and the way that I put it is people like to know that you've wasted some of your time on them. And, um, and so that's why I say an email blast is so ineffective is because everyone know everyone has sent an automated email at this stage. <laughs> you know, like if, if you haven't sent an automated email, um, then you either have staff that do it for you or um, you, you just don't know how to turn on a computer. I mean, every single person knows when they receive that sort of spam email, that, that mass blast email that, um, that there's been no thought and effort into the recipient. And to the point where I think we've got an automatic filtering system in our heads when we sit, when we look at our inbox, right? So, you know, we've got our sort of spam filters and all that thing, whatever gets through, I think we sort of look at it. And if the way that I like to, talk about it because i've thought about it quite a bit if i if i feel like this wasn't written for me then it's i'm not reading it i just and and then one day i sort of sat down i was like well why is that like what what happens if the information is really important to me like why aren't i reading it and then i thought well it's because if the person hasn't written it specifically for me then even if it's an even if it's important then i'm gonna have to do the work to pull the context into why it's important for me. So I'm going to have to work anyway. And realistically, if something's important, then um, I'm going to find out anyway. And so why would I spend my time reading every bit of information that is potentially for me or potentially not for me when I can just get the same output from an, an maybe a friend will tell me it's simple. It's as simple as that. Right. So if something's important for me, I'm going to find out eventually anyway. Um, and realistically it comes down to if I click into my emails and I think it's not written specifically for me, I'm just, I'm, I'm binning it. If I see the same one twice, I may unsubscribe. If I, after unsubscribing, if I see it again, I'm just going to filter it to block via my uh, email. So nothing from that company will, or from that um, domain will ever get to my inbox again. And that's just a, a necessity of modern day life. That, like, that is like a life management skill. They should teach that in schools this day, like a, how to make sure that you get, you stay on top of your email. And so um, this idea that spending individual time on individual people is a valuable commodity um, I fully agree with like we, we've really built um, X, Y on that premise that the individual um, interaction is far more important than speaking to many people at once. And it's crazy that other companies just haven't figured this out yet. 
you know, like they, a lot of companies can talk about the inefficiencies of sending blast emails, but they don't know what the solution is. And I find it almost hilarious. Like it, I've, I've talked to, um, cause we work with a lot of brands and they talk with a lot of advisors. And I, I remember saying to them once, well, how many advisors are on your list? And they're like, you know, maybe, you know, a couple of hundred. I said, even if all you did was send them each an individual email, that would probably improve your uh, hit rate by a couple of multiples. You know, um, I'm not saying you're going to get everyone, but simply by uh, personalizing things is such a better way to communicate. And then video, the thing that I love about video is actually a lot quicker than email. And it's actually confirmed to be specifically for the individual. And so in as far as video is quickly becoming uh, the main uh, form of media that we deal with online, I think it was a couple of years ago, it was like Facebook or Instagram. One of them said, you know, 80% of the content that we consume online shortly will be video. And so people are expecting it you're able to sort of hit those important things, you know, making it specifically for that person. You're, you're, you're spending your time thinking about them as you're sending the message. So all of those things combined to, for me to suggest that um, I think the premise for your product makes a hell of a lot of sense. Do you think now that we are sort of locked behind, you know, our gilded cages of our lovely houses, um, do you think that there's a chance that people are going to start realizing this quicker at a more rapid rate than before all this happened? Well, like they have to, you see diminishing returns, you know, you get left behind or, or, or you catch up. One of one of the projects we have often is people go, well, I don't have the time to send a video to an individual customer. I say, at what, at what point did your value of your time go up to thousands of dollars, uh, you know, a minute or an hour. Or an hour. Yeah, like, I, I, when did this happen? So we've been, we've been a bit ruined where we go, I don't know. I can't possibly talk to customers anymore. It's like, <laughs> hang, on, hang on, hang on. Yeah. So, so, so if, if by spending a minute sending a video or writing an email to a customer doubles the chance of that customer converting and they stay with you for five years, are you telling me that's not worth your time? Like, are you, are you kidding me? It's absolutely worth, it's worth your time more than anything else you're going to do today. I think we need to reassess reassess like how much is that time really worth and if it yeah and, and like be smart yeah work from dollars and go backwards if you have to spend an hour to get one client that stays with you five years still worth your time if you have to spend a day probably still worth your time you know yeah. and if you just every single, like 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 work out what makes sense look care to customers now like i think this is an opportunity i think what's going to be wonderful about it is you know the whole point of that video is that it's very transparent you're opening yourself to your customers, like, like, like I said, do, doing the videos in your house with your kids and stuff. Yeah, like I, I wasn't joking there. Now is an excuse to do that. So, like, large, large corporate brand, like, 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 you know, if I, like you're in there in a suit and tie. Maybe this is a time when, if you do a video, you're not in your suit and tie. People absolutely understand, like, more than ever. And then what happens is you do that, and people are like, oh, like, you know, Jeff or or Jenny, like, they're people like me. They're a mum. They're a dad like me. They're someone who goes out to the coffee shop like me. They, they live in, you know. Um, Hornsby like I do and suddenly you start this is how you make connections with, with other people you have points uh, that you resonate around you know and so the quicker you can find a common thread for both of you and it's I can I can tell you it's gonna be way quicker if you're not in the office in a suit and tie the quicker you'll probably build that relationship the more trust you'll probably have and then the more reciprocation you'll get where the client will give you their trust they'll open up and, you know, as long as you can deliver on your service or your products, that's how you win and compete. Absolutely. Because you and your team, you guys are mostly remote workers as well, right? So you, you guys don't really go to an office every day? So we're in six countries. I think we're six countries and six continents. We, um, we, ha we allow a team to go to co-working spaces. So right. for, some, for sanity purposes, some of us, myself included, are, are extroverts. So we love the energy. Other parts of the team are introverts. They don't need it as much. Um, so I think, so we, so we tend to work, like we, we, we have a co-working space here in Sydney. We have one in London. Um, the guys in Manila sometimes use it. The guys in the States don't. The guys in, in um, Poland don't. The guys in South Africa don't. Um, the vast majority of the team probably don't go into an office at all now. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. 
It's um, because at certain points in my career, I've sort of, I've done, I've worked in many different environments. And one of them was I worked from home. I'm, I'm like, I'm a introvert, which means I'm very comfortable like doing podcasts, but I always, when I, when I get asked to like do a public speech, like I was speaking at an event, I go, Oh no, 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 no. I always find an excuse to say no. So, um, so I'm like relatively introverted. And then, um, I worked out of home. This is a few years ago. I did like a six month stint every day out of home. And I thought, I thought I was going to love it. But even after six months, I sort of got ground down into, uh, you know, uh, realizing that I needed to, um, yeah, even, even if I was having like one or two meetings out and about, it wasn't too bad, but I, I think even, you know, uh, anything that's overwhelmingly consistent, I think is kind of like a dangerous place to be in. Um, although you do get more work done. That's the crazy thing about working from home is you typically, well, I do anyway, I probably get more work done being at home, um, not being interrupted by, you know, you know, other, other, well, you know, um, Andrew rocks. Um, so, you know, he's, uh, he's always got something interesting to say. Um, but sometimes I'm like, Hey man, I'm trying to get some work done here. <laughs> like, it's like, 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 I think one thing to be aware of though, is that different personalities work differently. So, so the way I understand extra intro, I think it's probably the best way to, 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 to kind of look at it is it's about where you get your energy from. Yes. It's not, it's not whether you're loud or quiet, whether you like getting on stage or not. Um, what that means, so for me, I'm on every scale. Uh, I probably align very well with the rock because I'm, I'm 100% extrovert. Yeah. But all that means is that is that I, like a vampire, feed off other people's energy. So <laughs> I, I can sit in a coffee shop and I'll have a lot more energy than I will do in a room on my own. Now, I don't have to talk to people interestingly i just have to have that energy around me and what it does is it gets my my brain going i'll also have to stop more i can't do a six hour piece of work i can work for a couple of hours max and then i have to break and talk to somebody yeah now so understanding how you work you work around that now and obviously working from home if you're that way inclined is, is a learning experience and the way that we do it is, is i'll hop on calls throughout the day with other team members in my in my area now if i look at the say take 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 my cto simon who works remote down in wollongong uh, like he's very much an extrovert. His energy comes from internal. So he, like you said, gets, you know, with other people in the room, he'll get a lot of work done on his own and he can go for like hours and hours. Just fine. He still loves people. He still like, again, like it's, it's a sliding scale. He still loves people. He still likes to connect. So we still take time to talk, yeah. um, but he gets more work done than, they, than we did in the office because people like me would be the ones who'd be, who'd be talking to him. Yeah. Yeah. Of a day, we, we get the same amount of work done, but the way we work is different. So I understand this, especially if you're a leader with your team. Understand, especially out of the office, that different people work different ways. What works for one will not necessarily work for another one and for yourself. Like I say, like, if you're an introvert or an extrovert, you're still a social creature, you're still human. You'll still need interaction, and that shouldn't just be your wife and your family. Yeah. Um, you know, you need you need other people to kind of, to, to, to keep you kind of going. And I, I, I think... You know, if we are in lockdown, then get on video calls. Like, like a video call does not have to be a meeting. Just because you're turning on Zoom, just because you're clicking that one button, does not then commit you to 30 minutes minimum. It could be, it could be literally a 30 second. Hey, what about this? Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. You know, that that's that that's a learned that's a learned process and a way of working that's actually quite hard to get your head around, and um, because it's changing the way that we fundamentally you have to press a button before you talk. Um, but it's far better than the alternative of you know, writing paragraphs and paragraphs on email or Slack. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Cause you know, a huge portion of communication is, is the nonverbal piece. Uh, and so communicating something, yeah, people can get annoyed with each other pretty quickly overwritten for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, I, t- I tend to find that people stay in better spirits when they catch up face to face. Like, we, um, we do a meeting every Tuesday at 7 a.m. And we try to get as many of the team there as possible. And um, it's, it doesn't really serve too much more of a purpose other than making sure that everyone is in the same room at the same time. And it's a bit of a cadence for us. Um, and so this Tuesday was the first Tuesday we've had, um, you know, our regular meeting while at the same time being in uh, – 
isolation. And so, yeah, it was, uh, it was a case of making sure that we jumped onto Zoom um, and catching up that face-to-face. And this, the, the abilities to get communication across efficiently and effectively, I find uh, using video to be insanely more, um, insanely more, I guess, efficient and effective. Sometimes what gets missed in videos is the ability to upload a file. So um, do you have any suggestions around, you know, let's say we're discussing a piece of work. Let's say we're, we're in the same team and I say, Hey boss, like I need you to check this thing out and let me know. Would, would it, would you just accompany that with an email or would you upload that file to, to zoom for example, or, or how, how would you accompany the file uploading with the conversation? Honestly, ju- just use Slack. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so like we use Slack. I know, I know, I know a, lot, a lot of financial advisors that use Slack as well. Um, look, while I'm talking, like, so it, it, let's say you're my team. We're talking right now. We'll be pinging stuff to each other on Slack as we're talking. Um, Slack has an inbuilt video tool as well. So if you don't want to, um, Zoom's free, obviously, for, for, for most one-to-one calls. Uh, you can use Slack as well. They have a video tool. Um, just use that. And, the, and obviously, the thing there as well is that you have an easy access history for files. You can, you can research. You can, you can go and find them two months later. Um, it's good for comms anyway um, and for, I think, security and kind of paperwork as well. Email, inboxing, deleting, a little bit harder. Um, that's my suggestion. I think, or, or an alternative, there are, there are Slack alternatives you can use. Yes, yes, yes. Um, actually, some of the, because all of this got sort of heaped upon uh, planners very quickly and a lot of them have not used Slack before. Um, so we just, we just went out and said, hey, look, we, we've actually, like our online platform does all this stuff. We can repurpose it and sort of squirrel you away a, a little piece to yourself to use. And there's a bunch of advisors that pick that up. So, yeah, I, I would say if you're very familiar with Slack, it's, it's definitely a very good tool. Um, otherwise, you know, just reach out to us. When, when should one use video in client acquisition? So let's just let, let's go back from chatting internally and uh, speak about client acquisition for a second. Let's say, um, I, like, I'd love to hear it from the Papa Bear himself because I tell you what's hilarious with that title, the Papa Bear, is um, I, w- because, because we've all gone into quarantine, XY's had to figure out what we're doing with our tour of events. Um, typically, we do like six at a time and we were in the process of, booking it and we've had to change it to something like to a digital event. And then someone sent me, (laughs) this is pretty funny. Someone sent me an example of what a digital event would look like. And then, so as I'm scrolling through this digital event, I see the words pop a bit and I'm like, what? And then I, I, I scroll back here and it was you, you, you were like one of the guest speakers at this (laughs) digital event. And I just, I was cracking out. So I'm like, ah, oh, I got a podcast booked in with this guy. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I just, oh, that whole story was basically how cool is the name Papa Bear? Um, and, and for anyone that doesn't know why, I assume it's because your logo is a bear. Is that, that's, is that why? Yeah, like it's, it's, it's brand and culture. Uh, the, lo- the, the bear start as a logo. It's got stage that like anyone joins the team, we get them to design their own custom bear suit. We send bear suits to clients, kids. Um, no way some stages so like it's become a thing that people find pretty hilarious so we're like look we'll just, we'll just go all in yeah. okay fair enough so uh, I'm, I'm keen to hear um from your point of view when should someone use video in terms of client acquisition because like if i go through in my mind what the steps are when we're speaking to a, a potential client and now potential clients are, are large companies big brands right so we would say hi or they might say hi or however the introduction is and we catch up for a meeting, you know, we'll discuss some things, confirm some things, catch up again, present some things, get a client. When would you, when would you put video in there? Yeah. So there's a couple of areas, there's a couple of areas and this is the test by the way, like, like anything you try that's new, my advice to everyone is, is test because it's not, these things are not one size fits all. Yep. Um, do not use it for cold outreach. Number yeah. one, <laughs> definitely, I can tell. You know, 
two reasons. One can be weird. Uh, it's not necessarily to say that it is. I, I do see some things like charities and stuff use, use it well. Um, but it's more the fact that, look, look doing videos take, does take time, as we've discussed. Cold outreach is a low converting way to get in touch with people. So if you have to send 100 emails to get two responses, maybe with video you get five responses. But is that worth the time, the extra time that you, you input into that? Yeah. So ROI on time here. Um, second touch point. So I say pre-meeting. So once someone's come in and they're interested, you drop, you drop a video through before you've, you know, if you're not doing a video call as your first thing you do, it's basically saying like, this is me, this is who I am. So I just want to introduce myself, say hi, you know, and then say, hey, look, I'm really looking forward to catching up next week. Obviously these days that'll be on Zoom. The other thing is actually to get people to book meetings in the first place. So an inquiry comes in, you send one of these and say, hey, look, I saw you just came in, working from home this week, et cetera. I'm including a link to book a Zoom call with me. I'm including a Calendly link on the video. So they watch the video and they click on the link and then off you go. The fact that you take the time to do that straight away, they're instantly like, oh, I, I, this person's good. I, I trust them. Assuming you have a trustworthy face. Um, <laughs> like, like, and, and if you're being genuine, and this is the point, yeah, is that like, if you're genuine, you care about customers, like it absolutely comes through. So I'd suggest that stage. What that means is that when you then start the meeting in a coffee shop on Zoom, they're like, oh, like they already feel like, like they know you. Yeah. So there's no like, who's the person? On the, like, there's no like shock of like starting. It's like, oh, yeah. Hey, Steve. Hey, hey Jenny. Um, in coffee shops, people are like, oh, there you are. You know, like, like, like they call you out. Um, that's why I suggest. The other thing is, 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 it's a follow up. So I think after after meeting, if there's next steps to be taken in the funnel, such, such, such as accepting a proposal, having a second meeting, it doesn't hurt someone there and say, hey, look, you know, especially if if they're lagging a bit, you know, taking a couple of days to come back to someone and say, hey, I just want to check that that's all good. I'm linking the proposal again. If it's cool, go ahead, accept it. If you, if you have any questions, though, like just just let me know. And that fact that again, you know, you're you're being genuine, you're being transparent. Law reciprocation um, tends to be more effective getting people to go. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can't, I can't leave. I can't leave Matt hanging. That's, that's a bit, you know. I'll get yeah. back. Where do you f- like out of all of those? So if I think about yeah, my process again. The, I, I, I've, we've got sort of a bit of a long process, but I guess that's because we're helping, you know, huge companies solve big problems. Um, so it, it doesn't happen too quickly. But if I think about in terms of a financial planning process, it would be the client comes in, uh, take a fact find, um, go through and figure out, you know, what it is, or the kind of advice that they need. Um, typically in a lot of times they'll sign up on the spot. So would, but one of the things that I've sort of spent a bit of my career learning about is a uh, buyer's remorse. And so after the point of time where they make the decision, sometimes they just need reassurance after they've purchased in order to make the whole experience a bit cleaner, nicer, handheld would, would, would you think that after a purchase has been made that a, that a video message to them just to say, awesome to have you on board, reiterate their problems, reiterate, you know, some potential solutions and give them a bit of reassurance that they've just made the right calculated decision, right? So that, cause even, you know, the best decisions that are made with the m- most amount of due diligence there's always still a little bit of like unsureness, I guess, attached to it. Have you heard or would, would you imagine sending one as a confirmation of a secure now ongoing relationship as a good use of video? Yeah, so, so we actually get used at three stages of the funnel. The first one is lead conversion. The second one is what we would term as activation. Right. Uh, which is exact, which is this, which is what you're talking about. Um, so, you know, we see this in our industry too. So take take an online platform where you've got science coming in. We'll do thousands and thousands, yeah. So it's a big funnel. And mm-hmm. what will happen is people will pay. And if you don't, then get those comp those those sites to be A happy with their purchase. This is a buyer's remorse side. The second part is actually to get set up correctly and to understand fully what it is they've purchased. Yeah. So they might buy on a sale and then again and they're like, yeah, I'm still confused. Um, the other thing is, is they might, they might not therefore then go and make the most of the offering in typically the first, um, two weeks to three months. 
And what you will find, uh, like, maybe this is, this is slightly less relevant, but well, with us, with that, with, with online co- companies, it's actually a lot easier to cancel. So we, we actually hit this a lot harder. People can cancel any time off any plan. So it's something that we focus on on absolute load is pe- most people who cancel are people who have not activated in those first few months. Yeah. So inter- the same thing. Yeah. They, are, they either haven't got the value, they haven't used it, they haven't taken advantage. And three months later, they go, why am I still paying for this? Um, or potentially buyers more. So, so, so this stage of the funnel, again, like I, I think activation is a good word for it because you're activating them to, to make sure that they're, they're, they're in, they're understanding it. Reassure them, but also like, do your damn hardest to make sure they are taking advantage of everything you offer that they're set up. If they're not getting the call and be like, Hey, look, I know you're, you're a paying client, but look, I just like to give you another, like, you know, half an hour time just to make sure, because I don't think you've quite got, got this part done. Let's make mm. sure you, you know, you're getting the full value there. And the and clients, the other thing is, is, is it's also customer service excellence at this point. So, so you're going above and beyond You're you're preemptively, spotting where they're going to have issues and you're stepping in and saying, Hey, look, look, we just want to help you here. Make sure you're good. And like not a lot of companies do that. People are like, you know, I've got your money. Like, this is great. Like off, off we are to the shops. You know? Yeah. You're stopping and, and saying, look, giving us your money is, is the very first step. Yes. Um, and probably the least important step. What the important stuff starts now. Yeah. I remember, um, there's a company called Humanitix. And, and basically it's, it was a joint, it's a joint project, I think by Atlassian, the Aussie boys and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically just replacing Eventbrite with another Eventbrite, but this time the money goes to, you know, lovely, lovely, um, initiatives. And, um, and I got a, I got a call from, from the team once and, and we ended up chatting and I was thinking, this is like really good customer experience, but it's taking this person way too long. And also they're not getting through with all of their calls. And so I remember chatting to this guy and I was like, look, what you've done is excellent, but what happens if A, I didn't take calls from un- unknown numbers um, and B, you know, by the time we finish this conversation, it's going to be 10 minutes. Right. And, and realistically, like we're not, we're not a huge events company. You know, we'll, we'll do maybe like 10 a year, but at the same time, our, our tickets are pretty low cost. So they're not making much revenue on it. Um, and I, I, I end up telling these guys, I was like, Hey, look, you should t- to achieve what you're trying to achieve. Um, you should be using Bonjoro. I remember actually talk, talking to these about these guys about your company. And, um, and it's amazing the, for the people that want to do good customer service, there's even better or, or more, I should say more efficient ways to do it. Um, because yeah, like at the end of the day, I, I don't know why people feel a little bit intimidated or scared to provide good customer service. Do you think potentially it's along the lines of why I set the bar so high that I can't live up to on an ongoing basis? Would, have, you, have you ever sat down sort of thought about why people wouldn't want to produce high levels of custom service? I think it's an experience, to be honest. Um, I think it's, it's probably not understanding the level of impact it can make. So, so we, like, we have a pretty high, like we've, we've done a little bit of NPS, lo- love it or hate it. I think we're around about 70, um, which is pretty, 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 pretty good. Yeah. But, but we, but we specifically hire, so we've always had good customer service, but, but as a culture, we enjoy our customers. We provide their service when you start a new company and we're very much an attitude of like get stuff out the door fast, even if it's not completely built, you need to have good stuff to support that because things will break. Um, yeah. yeah. The overall value is better to the customer and the company, but you know, we just, but then we've like hired people in um, like say States, UK, South Africa to make sure we have 24 hour coverage. Now, I can tell you our business wouldn't be here if we didn't do that. Um, and as a young company, it's the way we succeeded. I, I do think startup companies, and this is advice, this is services, like uh, new companies tend to already be better at this because, because they know they have to do everything for customers to win them and every customer's important. As you start to scale, you probably lose that connection with customers. I, I don't think this is necessarily... I don't think you're being nefarious or anything else or, or making bad decisions. I just think operationally things get lean you're chasing after like like new clients are always the thing that people focus on because it's it's new and shiny 
mm-hmm. you know, despite the fact that it's, you know, seven times minimum, like se- minimum seven times uh, more cost effective to get a dollar off an existing customer than it is to get it, get it off a new customer. Um, you need to experience it to understand the impact it makes in your business. If you're not prov- doing everything you can for customer service, do it. And if this means putting in an extra hour a day, do it because it will pay dividends. If you can, if you need to outsource that customer service, you can do. Um, we, so there's a, there's a thing that we, we, we do our customer service in Western countries. So South Africa, UK states and here, um, specifically because we know there are biases about outsourced customer service. Now, do I agree with those? No, I don't. Is it a fact of life? It is. So given the fact that most sales in Western countries, we've done this, you know, that said, you know, Amy in the UK is half Filipino, like, like it, you know, it, 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 but she's British. Yeah. She's originally come. So, you know, we, 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 we've kind of played around that a bit. It's just a fact of life. Um, but you can still do customer service cost effectively, build it into your process. You know, this is the thing. Yeah. Like if you, if you make it a process, the cost drops because it operationally becomes a lot easier to do. I don't know if it is a fear that people will have to live up to it, like to live up to a bar. Like if you, like you should set the bar high, high, you should live up to it. And then next year you should beat it. And then next year you should like, like you should be setting that by heart, like, like the, the, the bar high, like your customers deserve that. If you're a customer of someone else, you deserve that. Set the bar high, smash it. A lot of companies don't do that. You know, the average MPS of a corporate is like minus 40 or something. Like wit, like opportunity. Like it's, it's a great opportunity. Like win, like it's, it's the easiest place to win. It's pretty cost effective. It's not hard to do. Anyone could do it from day one. Yeah. Don't be afraid, do it. And just, there's not a lot of competition for great customer service. I'll put it that way. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, really appreciate uh, you spending your time to, to walk us through some of that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting, I guess, moment in time where a lot of companies are going to be working remote and uh, your tool is, is one of a handful that I could imagine should be getting used um, by everyone. Can you please just let us know what your contact details are? Uh, if there's any advisors out there that want to reach out and say hi. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to hunt me down on LinkedIn. So if you type in Papa Bear, I'm pretty sure I'll be one of the three people that you see. I'm, I'm, the, guy, I'm the guy in the bear suit. Um, <laughs> reach out if you want to chat to me about it. If, like, if you like some advice, especially on like, remote working stuff, like, 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 let us know. We're, we're here to help. We've done it a long time. I had a lot of help getting where, where we are today. Um, if you want to try Bonjour, if you sign up, you will receive a welcome video from one of the team somewhere in the world. Um, so, so if you want to experience it first hand, give that, give that a go, just, just see what it's like. Um, and then maybe the penny will drop for you. And if you want to try it, if you are Australian, uh, I, uh, don't mind saying that we give extra special care to our Aussie customers. Ooh, look at that. Nice. All right, mate. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Really appreciate it. Awesome to be here. Cheers. Bye.